السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات آئی ایم وسیم احسن یور کورس انسٹرکٹر فار دا کورس آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا ورچول یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان ٹوڈے آئی ایم اسٹارٹ ٹیچنگ دس کورس ٹو یو ویتھ دا انڈرسٹینڈنگ دیٹ یو آل ہیو ڈن دا بیسک مارکیٹنگ کورس نیملی پرنسپلس آف مارکیٹنگ دوز آف یو ہو آلریڈی ہیو ڈن اور آر ڈوئنگ Another course by the name of uh, Marketing Management are going to enjoy this course even more. I'm going to talk about introduction to the course, why this subject has become so important in today's marketing practices, what is the kind of value which brand management creates for the company, apart from creating value for consumers. And while talking about all these things, I'm going to touch upon so many different facets of the subject, which I shall be talking in deeper detail later through my lectures. And the basic objective of touching upon those facets is that you develop a very clear understanding of what we're going to talk about in this lecture and also later. Brand management has been around for as long as we can look back into the area of professional marketing. But it always has been a part of the traditional marketing approach in which many of the functions of brand management were performed by the traditional marketing manager along with his team members, namely the sales manager, the advertising and communications manager, uh, the marketing administration manager, to name a few. So in other words, the functions of brand management which today have become Uh, so well structured, were performed by different people within the marketing department. So this is not to say that brand management was not being done at all. It certainly was being carried out, but in different parts, in different components, by different people sitting within the traditional setup. Uh, brand management in present day shape has come into limelight and a very sharp focus over the last 20 years. And uh, it really has undergone a tremendous transformation in terms of its functional execution. And that functional execution, like I indicated earlier, is the responsibility of the brand manager. So what has happened is that brand management has not lost its primary roots with the area of marketing, it only has acquired very well and explicitly defined dimensions within which the function operates and uh, it connects itself with different touch points within and outside of the marketing department. What are those touch points? Uh, let me give you two examples. One could be that the brand manager has developed a brand and he's going to place order through the inventory manager about packaging material. He's got to be very precise. He's got to be very accurate about his forecasting so that company does not end up spending too much on the inventories which might keep sitting in the stores for a time longer than they really have to. This is one example of a touch point. Another example could be um, the actual sales which are going to take place in the market So okay, he's got to coordinate all the time with the sales manager and let him have very clear understanding of uh, the kind of volumes which the company is going to achieve so that the sales manager in turn can talk very convincingly with the distributors, wholesalers, retailers, meaning all members of the trade. Having said that, let me tell you that brand management got impetus in the Western markets, which is very obvious and in the present day, context very natural. The driving factors behind the emergence of this concept were competition and growth of markets. And I think we all know that growth and competition are not mutually exclusive, meaning you cannot exclude one from the other. Whenever growth takes place, competition pops up. Why? because growth attracts more players, or even the existing players in the market invest more and more, 
in order to grow, in order to make profits, in order to sustain themselves on a consistent basis. So we can say with a lot of confidence that it was the explosive growth of different brands by different companies in different sectors of industries all over the world, especially in the Western markets, that gave rise to the explosive growth of brands. When we had so many brands, another thing you see which was taking place simultaneously was a growth of categories. Now, here you see that I would like to draw a distinction between a product category and a brand. I think you all know that a category consists of so many different branded products of similar nature and similar features. When I talk about similar features, it is not to be confused with the concept of differentiation because brands are differentiated from each other. But coming back to the category, category you see is a collection of similar items with almost similar features. For example, smoking is one category, uh, cold drinks is another category, but then within these categories you can have subdivisions in terms of different segments and that's where the concept of segmentation comes in, which you already have studied and you know very well what that is. Okay, getting back to categories. When categories were expanding within the same company or across the companies within various industries, what was happening was that marketing managers had to grapple with the complexity of ever-increasing activities in their marketing areas. I gave you the example of two categories like smoking and cold drinks. Just imagine for the time being that a company dealing in smoking area also gets into cold drinks or already is into these two product areas and then imagine the amount of complexity which the marketing manager and his team will have to deal with while looking after the marketing mix relating the two different product lines. Because the two product lines may not be just two product lines, I mean two product areas. The two product areas can have different brands within themselves. So the division you see gets into further division and is subdivided into so many different sectors and sections all having their own different brands. Okay, having said that, let me tell you that the concept of brand management, although new, but it already has crept into Pakistan with a thrust. Many of the multinational corporations in our country are following this concept. They have uh, the functions of brand management very well laid out within their marketing departments, and uh, they have in place good, solid, professional brand managers uh, looking after their designated areas. The scope for people like you who may like to become brand managers and then eventually marketing managers and then eventually, you know, you can go further high, have a tremendous potential to be there. Uh, the, the subject and the discipline offers a lot of potential, that's what I'm saying, uh, because it has just crept in and it is budding, it is blooming. Having said all that, I can now easily state that this course will, inshallah, develop a very clear understanding about what a brand is and why and how brands are managed in a competitive and hostile environment. So in other words, by the time we complete the course, we shall have developed a very clear understanding of the following learning objectives. We're going to learn the background that has given rise to the well-structured concept of brand management. I already have talked about that. It was being done earlier in components here and there, and now it is being done in a very well-structured way within certain dimensions. We're going to learn the variables that have made businesses deem much more than before the significance of strong brands. We're going to learn the contribution of strong brands to the financial results of corporations, why they do it and how they do it. 
I shall be talking about why and how, meaning why brands contribute, they are meant for that. They have to generate earnings, they have to generate profits, and they have to sustain companies. The how side of it is all about brand management, which we shall be talking in detail. We're going to learn the challenges that brands in the making or those that are very well established face during the management process do basically to market dynamics. What does this mean? This means that all brands run into different kinds of situations. Could be easy situation, could be a difficult situation. Brands in the making have got to be nurtured and fostered very carefully, just like you grow a small plant. They need very tender care, and brands which are very well established, they've got to stay where they are if they cannot go further up. All are challenging tasks. So we're going to learn what are those situations which brands run into. We're also going to learn what drives brand managers to consider acquisition of established brands in preference to growing their own. This is going to be a very, very important and vital area. And as a matter of fact, this is one of the factors which gave rise to the very concept of brand management. We shall talk about that later. We're going to learn what necessitates, in the eyes of brand managers, extending product categories. Remember categories I talked about earlier, a collection of items, into different brands, and what are the risks and rewards involved in doing so. It is easy to say, let us expand the category, let us introduce a new brand, or let us go for a brand extension, but then creating the whole thing and then maintaining it is another. We're going to develop understandings of various tools that brand managers have at their disposal to face all kinds of situations, business friendly as well as business hostile. I talked about that earlier, but I can further dilate that for your understanding. Like I said, a brand can run into two different situations, a friendly situation and a hostile situation. A friendly situation is not only a situation in which you see the brand is growing. A friendly situation could well be when the brand is not very strong, but the situation offers tremendous opportunity to make that brand strong. It is the job of the brand manager to look into what could be the variables and what are the tools at his disposal to make that brand strong and then stronger. Similarly, a hostile situation could be that you have a very strong brand, but it seems you're running into problems because of the very intense competition, because of the overall poor economic conditions, and so on and so forth. So we're going to look into all those situations and what are the dynamics uh, behind those situations and uh, what are the, the steps brand managers should be taking and, and can take in order to reverse the situation. Because uh, you will agree with me, you, you must have learned from the basic management course that one of the most important jobs of a good manager, whether a brand manager or any other manager in any other department, is to pull the company or the business out of troubled waters. Okay. Having talked about the learning objectives, which I said we shall be achieving by the time that we complete the course, let us now talk about brands in terms of understanding them. Let us try to develop a, a very clear understandings about what a brand is. Let me give you a small definition of what a brand is. I think we all know, not only from the basic course that we have done, but also from the fact that we all are consumers, that a brand is a name, a sign, it's a symbol, it's a logo, or it may be a combination of all of these factors in order to identify it and differentiate it from the rest of the crowd. Everybody has a brand with distinct features. Some have better features, some have not better features. So in order to differentiate your product, meaning a branded product, 
from those of competitors, you have to have a brand which has a name, a logo, a symbol, or a combination of all of them, like I said earlier. The objective is to give it different features for the sake of identification. And therefore, having said that, I can say with a lot of confidence that the most distinct nature of a marketing manager or a brand manager job is to create, to maintain, and sustain brands in hostile environment. And that is what brand management is all about. Brand development is the direct responsibility of brand manager, but then the process doesn't end there, and the process doesn't also start there. What does that mean? What that means is that a brand manager has got to be supported by the marketing manager, who in turn has got to have the support of his seniors, meaning the top management of the company, and the top management of the company that must have complete support of the board of directors of the company. And this shows how important and significant developing and maintaining brands is. Remember, I talked about this factor earlier, that brands give companies earnings, profitability. And brands are the ones that sustain the companies. And they assure future for the company. So therefore, the brands have to be supported by all and sundry in the company. Managing brands, however, is the responsibility of the brand manager. Toward a very distinct understanding of brand management, we go back to the growth factor. We talked about secret growth in industries, growth of various categories, and we talked about competition and the need to stay at the very alert in order to maintain and sustain your brand so that we shall touch upon that subject once again. And this is what I talked about earlier, that there are certain common denominators which are going to form the building blocks of brand management as a subject in totality. And therefore, when I talk about see, these facets or these building blocks, it is not repetition for the sake of repetition. It rather is to talk about those factors which will keep on making your understanding clearer and clearer. Okay. Product categories and brands proliferate because of the following three reasons. Strong brands create value for the company. We talked about that earlier. And lead businesses into diversified areas. And hence, diverse product categories come into being. In order to further elucidate this factor, let me rephrase it. When you have a strong brand, you like to take benefit of the value of that brand, not only in that area in which the brand exists, but also in areas in which that brand name can do wonders for the business. If brand X is really creating a lot of value for the company and also for the consumers in the area of detergents, you might start thinking that we should also get into cold drinks, for example. And the brand is already established. People know it. There's a very strong brand preference for it. And hence, a very strong brand franchise. If we create another brand in another category, there is nothing stopping us. So what you're doing is you're get, getting into another diversified area. And this is what I talked about earlier. Different categories, different product management, and hence different brand management underneath. Okay. The second factor is growth again, which creates opportunities to create more brands within one particular category to serve different segments. Why? You have brand A. And the category, for example, is foods, fast food, for example. And you see your brand reaching a certain plateau. And you know that it cannot further grow, meaning it may remain very strong. It may keep on giving you the kind of profits that you've been generating for the last just a couple of years, but it does not have any further potential to give you further profitability and hence even better cash flows and better earnings 
and better value for your stocks. So you think of introducing another brand. Whether that brand becomes a success or a failure, that remains to be seen by the management of the company. But that is something which really necessitates introducing another brand and another brand and another within the same product category. The third factor why you introduce brands and dilate in the categories is to achieve growth. A company might run into a situation where it is not growing at all. So the company, the management have to sit together, heads down, what do we do? So the situation necessitates to introduce more brands because the existing brands are not really helping you to achieve growth. The company might be kind of nose diving. So as a very urgent move, you get into new brands in the hope that new brands are going to be a success because you never start these kind of initiations and introductions um, with the kind of feeling that the brand is not going to be a success. You always are optimistic and that's the way you have to be in business. Okay, having said that, let me state, when we are dealing with categories of branded products, we are dealing with product management. And I think I have made it very clear thus far that product management is kind of see a bigger thing. And within the product management, we have brands. So brand management is kind of a smaller thing relatively in comparison with product management. To say it again, product management for product A, category A, I'm sorry to say that, for category A and within that category so many different brands. And category B is another product category and in that category we have so many different brands. So brand management goes underneath. When we deal with brands, like I've said, we deal with brand management. How? I've explained that in words. Now let us take a look at a graphical presentation which is going to make the concept very clear to you. Let's take a look at uh, the traditional functional structure. As you can see from the graphical presentation, we have a marketing manager who has reporting to him three managers. I mean, it can be four managers, five managers, but just for the sake of our discussion, we say three managers in this presentation. Marketing communications manager who is responsible for advertising campaigns and promotions and dealing with advertising agencies and so on and so forth. Then we have the sales manager who is responsible for sales. He sells, sales and sells and manages you know, sales all over the territory. Then we have uh, the marketing administration manager who is responsible for, let us say, coordinating all the marketing and sales activities among various units of the company in the company's territory. If it is one country, within the country, if it is one region, within the region. Before we move on to the next presentation, which is the functional structure with product and brand management, let me tell you one thing, that the traditional structure is not the outdated structure. It still is in vogue. It is not replaced by the structure which I'm going to show you now. Why? I leave it to your imagination until the time I talk about that later in a few minutes. Now, looking at this structure, which is the functional structure with product and brand management, we again see the marketing manager sitting right there. Yes, he has to be there or she has to be there. And we also have, you know, the same old marketing communications manager and marketing administration manager underneath the marketing manager supporting him, reporting to him. But then we also see two additions. We see two managers sitting right and left of the two old managers, the meaning marketing communications manager and marketing administration manager. The two additions are product manager for product line A, which for the sake of discussion is detergents, and then we have on the right side of the presentation, product manager for product line B, which is personal care products like you see, the shave cream or toothpaste or you know, with soap and so on and so forth. These managers are responsible for their respective product lines because they're dealing with two different products. And just look at this you know, from the standpoint of these two lines being two different companies. It could have been very well the case that product line A is a different company and product line B is a different company. 
But if you have these two lines forming the same company, it explains why should we have two different product managers and two different brand managements. All right, getting back to product line A, you can see that we have you know, two brand managers. The one is brand manager for brand A, and we have brand manager for brand B. And the reason you know, that we have uh, the product line A manager, because you know, he's dealing with a category. And a category, you see, is a collection of different items, branded items. So that's why you know, we have brand A manager, and then we have brand B manager. And if we have another brand, maybe we have you know, brand C manager. And uh, it also very well could be that we have, you know, the three managers can managing like, you know, four or five different brands. If uh, a few of them, you know, can happen to be kind of, you know, small brands. So there's no hard and fast rule that for every brand there has to be a separate brand manager. It all depends on the company and how they decide about the number of brand managers in the light of the workload, the number of activities, and the complexities involved in the management process when it comes to managing different brands they have. Okay. Now, what you see on the right-hand side of the presentation is a total replication of what I have talked about for product line A. This is a hypothetical case, and uh, I think this is quite enough for our understanding uh, what product management and brand management is all about. So, after having taken a very good look at the two charts, we can easily summarize our findings. I will no longer leave that to your imagination, and I would like to put that in a summarized form myself. Number one finding is, and very important, it is practical and prudent to have different managers for different products and different brands. Specially designated managers for specially designated products and brands always do a better job because there's no confusion. There is no communication across the categories. There is no division of attention and attraction across the categories. They bring marketing mix of brands and products that they are dealing with in a sharper focus. And therefore, they make better decisions about the marketing mix of, these, of those brands. Another finding is that working across the categories breeds complications. I touched upon that earlier. And hence, managers make less than highly qualitative decisions because of the lack of focus due to work overload. And at the end of the day, they hurt their brands with less profitability and maybe outright losses. The last finding is product and brand management does not replace the traditional structure. It only adds new layers to the structure of the marketing department. This is a finding which needs further elaboration. What I'm saying is that the traditional marketing structure is not outdated. It still is in vogue. And if you are a one brand company, you still have that structure. Because in that case, you don't really have to have a product manager. And you don't really have to have brand manager or brand managers under the product manager because you're dealing with just one brand. And that job could be very easily and convincingly done by the marketing manager, who is everything rolled into one. And whether he's the product manager, he's the brand manager, and you know, he looks after the total responsibilities of the marketing department because he's dealing with just one brand. And therefore, the traditional marketing structure, I'm calling it traditional, is not outdated. The modern functional structure, which we have seen with added layers, comes into play when we have more than one brand and maybe more than one category. I would like to point out one thing at this functional structure with product and brand management, which you might have noticed already that we are showing the sales managers, I mean the two sales managers sitting between, kind of sandwiched between the brand managers in two different categories. Now, a question might flash into your minds. Why has the sales managers been demoted from the traditional structure, a level below, into the modern structure? There's nothing like that. It all depends on the company. There's no hard and fast rule. 
the reason I'm showing you know, these two sales managers sitting between brand managers is um, for the sake of having a better coordination among these people uh, who form a team for the marketing manager. So this is uh, not to be confused with um, an apparently looking uh, demotion. Okay, thanks. Uh, again, to summarize, I can say that um, the layers, you know, which you see added uh, uh, at the modern functional structure uh, have been added in order to improve functionality of the area of brand management. What are the functions of brand management? Let's take a look at the graphical presentation now. Brand management, we can sense thus far, is at the heart of marketing management. It is the centerpiece. And there are so many functions which revolves around this centerpiece. What are those? Let's talk about those. We have to have a very clear, clear understanding of those. A brand manager develops long-range competitive strategy for the brand. What does that mean? It is a very simple and precise kind of a statement, but this speaks volumes. While strategizing, you've got to take into account different strategies. It's not just one strategy. For your brand, you have to have a strategy about your pricing. For your brand, you have to have a strategy about your advertising and promotions. You have to have a sales strategy, which is directly linked with distribution strategy in order to increase sales. Then you have to have a financial strategy. By a financial strategy, I mean another in a very important touch point. By a financial strategy, I mean whether the company is going to generate revenues through the existing brands or the company needs money from outside sources in order to uh, advertise and promote you know, brand A or brand B or brand C. So what I'm saying is it is a set of strategies, or you can put it like this, it is a set of sub-strategies, which I've talked about, which form the overall business strategy for the company devised by the brand manager and honed by the marketing manager. The second important function of a brand manager is to prepare with the help of salespeople, sales forecasts, and dovetail the same into the marketing plans and budgets. Don't be overwhelmed and overawed by the terminology of marketing plans and budgets. Marketing plan basically consists of different strategies which I already have talked about. And whenever you talk about strategies, those you know who have not done yet the course on marketing management, I would repeat, strategies, whenever you talk about, entail certain tactics. So getting back to marketing plan, when you talk of strategies, you also going to have to talk about the tactics which you are going to employ in order to fulfill your strategy. Strategy is a certain direction or a destination, you see, where you're going. In order to reach that destination, you have to have a set of tactics. How to reach there? Very straight or right turn and then left turn and then straight. So those are tactics. You come up with a marketing plan and into the marketing plan, you dovetail your numbers. When you do that, with the help of sales forecasts, you are preparing your budgets. And budgets are all about revenues and expenditures. To say in very precise words, you're talking about a brand, you're making a marketing plan, you've got to know what is going to be the top line, meaning the amount of revenue with which the brand is going to generate. And then you have done below expenditures and you keep on subtracting those until the time you hit the bottom line, Okay, which is either net profits or net losses. So these are the kind of numbers that you have to incorporate into your budgets, which are kind of dovetailed with the marketing plan, and marketing plans are all narratives, and marketing plans and budgets put together, that becomes your overall business plan. The third function, again, which is a very important function of brand management, is that a brand manager has to work with advertising agencies in order to develop campaigns, and before developing campaigns, you know, he has to develop a copy, and you know what a copy is. You must have uh, studied that in your basic marketing course. A copy is, you see, a small set of communication which you use while uh, preparing your advertising plans, and whatever you communicate to the consumer about brand.
features, you know, the benefits which it brings to consumers, or whatever you want to talk about the brand, which builds its character and eventually gives the brand its identity. That's part of the communication, and uh, that communication becomes a you know, copy. And uh, it is the responsibility of the brand manager to see to it that the copy is right, it is accurate, and with accuracy, he deals with the advertising agencies for them to come up with campaigns which are very, very relevant for the brand. The fourth function of brand management, or for that matter, a brand manager, is to stimulate support for the brand among the salespeople and members of the trade, meaning distributors, wholesalers, and retailers. This is a tough job, and he can seek very comprehensive support only if he is very convincing about the strategies that he has devised, and strategies has, have got to be the true reflection of the need that the brand or brands are going to fulfill in the marketplace. So conviction comes with accuracy and with prudence and with the right kind of thinking, the right philosophy, the right rationale behind the brand and the right reason for being for the brand. Having said that, we now move on to function number five, which is to gather intelligence on the brand's performance, customer and trade attitudes, new problems, and opportunities. What does that mean? What this means is that a brand manager has got to have his fingers on the pulse of the market. He's got to understand his own brand. He's got to understand competitors' brands and then identify any problems that he might be facing toward his brands and then look for the solutions that are needed to rectify the problem. This is a very important function, and this brings into play his coordination and his continuous liaison with the outside agencies like market research companies, because you might have to employ one in order to find out what's going wrong with the brand. Or even if the brand is doing very well, he still has to know what are the features which are attracting uh, so many consumers and bringing the company higher level of sales. So this basically is a function which calls for a very close liaison and coordination, not only with the outside agencies, but also with members of the trade and his own peers in the sales department. Function number six, meet changing needs of the market by initiating new products or bringing about improvements in the existing ones. This is what If a brand manager has market se jo malumat hain, achi quality ki hain, aur usse pata hai ki uska brand kis tarikhe se move kar raha market mein. In comparison with the brands of the competition, then he definitely is in a better position to make better decisions about the brand. But asani ke saath brand manager jo hai, wo ye faisla kar sakta hai. کہ کون سا وقت مناسب اور موضوع ہوگا کہ ایک نیا برانڈ مارکیٹ میں لایا جائے یا ایک موجودہ برانڈ کو امپروو کیا جائے دیز آر دا فنکشنز آف ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ اینڈ دے مائٹ ساؤنڈ لائک ٹوٹل مارکیٹنگ ایفرٹ اینڈ دیٹ مائٹ یو نو فلیش ون کوشچن ان ٹو یور مائنڈس اف دس از واٹ اے برانڈ مینیجر از گن ڈو What good is the marketing manager for? The answer is that product manager has got to have total support of the marketing manager, and he cannot move, and he should not move, without the patronage of the marketing manager. Marketing manager, your head of the marketing, your honge, unki jab tak support nahi hogi, brand manager, ki jo job hai, wo bahut saada mausar tarikhe se سر انجام نہیں پائے گی آئی تھنک وی ہیو ٹاک فائٹ ابیٹ اباؤٹ دا فنکشنز آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ اینڈ ان دا ہوپ دیٹ وی آل آر کیئر اباؤٹ واٹ برانڈ مینجمنٹ ڈز لیٹس نا موو آن ٹو دا نیکسٹ ٹاپک وائی سو مچ ٹاک اباؤٹ برانڈ مینجمنٹ وائی ایس ایٹ دیٹ ایوری باڈی ان دا بزنس کمیونٹی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ برانڈ مینجمنٹ مچ مور دین بیفور وی ہیو سین اینڈ وی ہیو سینس دس فار that brand management is a big area and there are certain fundamental factors which will keep popping up again and again. 
and the factors through which will keep popping again and again are growth and competition. हम इस पे बात कर चुके हैं कि ये ग्रोथ और कंपटीशन जो कि दोनों साथ साथ चलते हैं इन दो मुहरकत की वजह से ब्रांड मैनेजमेंट अपने इस नौयत में वजूद में आई एंड नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज हाउ टू ग्रो वी टॉक्ट अबाउट कंपटीशन वी टॉक्ट अबाउट ग्रोथ अगेन द क्वेश्चन इज हाउ टू ग्रो बिकॉज अनलेस वी ग्रो वी कैनॉट वी कैनॉट मैनेज ब्रांड्स एंड वी कैनॉट कम्पीट we cannot be in a good for the company can be good for the business so on and so forth we have to keep in mind that there are only two ways to grow one is through organic growth and the other is through acquisitions we shall talk about these two different models of business one by one organic growth se kya murad hai organic growth se ye murad hai ki bilkul jaise ek pauda khud lagaya jaye uski nasho nama ki jaye aur usko parwan chadhaya jaye ye ek organic growth hai So in other words you know what it means is that you create a brand then you maintain it then you sustain it for all times to come for consistent you know financial results uh like you know good profitability good earnings good cash flows the same factors and denominators with which i've talked about earlier this is a route to seek the which is not that easy it's a difficult route and it takes a long long time long long time but if you see the situation of a company allows that which it does in so many cases the company should follow this route the other route to seek which i talked about is acquisitions iska matlab ye hai ki aap market mein apni nazar daudaye aur dekhein jo ki aap daudane ki baat nahi hai aapko pata hona chahiye ki market mein kaun si aisi companies hain ya brands hain jinka aap bhav laga sakte hain ki jo bechna cha rahe hain wo kyun bechna cha rahe hain there could be you know different reasons one could be that you offer an offer lot of money to them and the, and the offer is so tempting they cannot refuse the other possibility could be that their brand is not doing all that well and they may like to get rid of that and you knowing that the brand has the potential and you can turn the brand around you again make an offer so this is the way that you buy brands through acquisitions a lot of acquisitions have been taking place over the last 15 to 20 years and especially in the 1980s when the concept of brand management came into the limelight and sharp focus that was a time when so many companies were running after very strong brands in order to make sure that they could guarantee future earnings so a lot of activity in terms of buying and selling was taking place in those days now this is not to say that this kind of activity is not taking place nowadays it does take place the question is whether to grow through organic growth or through acquisitions jaisa ki maine bataya organic growth jo hai agar aapko market mein koi bana bana brand nahi milta ya bani banayi company nahi milti to naturally aapke paas ek hi rasta reh jata hai ki aap organic growth kare aur uske vaaste aapko har stage se guzarna hoga agar wo dusri possibility aap ke raste mein aa jaati hai if it presents itself and you find that this is kind of a gift all that you have to pay a lot of money for that then you go for that and that is kind of a shortcut and that is a route which is much less difficult than going through the organic way to give you an example a recent example one of the largest companies manufacturing computers on the world stage has been taken over by a relatively smaller company from this part of the world with this concept it is an acquisition that has taken place the medium of instruction limits me to name the companies but i think this is good enough telling you that a smaller company has bought a much bigger and stronger company only in order to own their strong brand because once they have the strong brand they can guarantee future earnings now this is not to suggest that market growth all this takes place through acquisitions all i'm saying is whatever route you follow you've got to maintain the brand 
and you've got to sustain the brand and you've got to make sure that regardless of the ownership of the brand, at any given particular point in time, you as brand manager manage the brand right. Now the question is, what is it that makes organic growth more difficult than the other route? There are different factors. One is the maturity of the category you are a part of. Maybe the category does not have the potential to further grow. Even if you and also your competitors keep on bringing in more brands, but the category is not inflating because the pie has already dilated to the maximum possible point. We're talking about the impediments in the way of growing organically. And I would summarize it like this. Markets grow and mature. Categories grow and mature. And these are the cases in particular in the Western markets. This may not be the case in Pakistan. Uh, I will talk about that also. Uh, but it is basically because of the maturity factor that uh, uh, growth through organic pig that becomes at times very difficult and companies start running after brands which are already established and uh, they start offering amount of money to the intended targets uh, which are astronomical. Yani jo unki stock ki value hoti hai, jo unki earnings ki ratio hoti hai, usse bahut zyada companies offer karti hai and the intended targets become so uh, kind of tempted by the offer, you know, the intended buyer uh, is uh, the making uh, that they end up being uh, the bought up. And uh, the companies, you know, that have brought, uh, bought those companies and bought those brands um, uh, feel uh, comfortable because uh, they know uh, they can now grow. That immediately uh, brings more revenue to the company, the more volumes to the company in the shape of new brands and uh, with better earnings, uh, better ratios and prof better profitability. So the, this is the reason why we have talked about uh, the difficulty involved in the way of growing organically. And the difficulty involved in the way of growing organically automatically becomes the kind of uh, the comforting factor that when you go uh, for growth through acquisitions. All right. In today's lecture, we have talked about introduction to the concept of brand management. We have tried to understand brands, what they are, who they are, and how they're managed. About brand management, we have talked very briefly. I say briefly because we shall keep talking about that throughout the course, because the course is all about that. We also touched upon the functions of brand management, which are at the center place of the overall functions of marketing. And we also have touched upon why is there so much talk nowadays about the concept of brand management, what has brought this concept into the limelight and into a sharp focus, and what have been the developments that have taken place after that and keep on taking place even today. We shall talk about some very interesting concepts like uh, brand value, brand uh, equity, brand power, in order to be able to understand the real definition of brand management in the next lecture. And before I say Khuda Hafiz to you, let me get back to a very important point which is about the course resource. I've not touched upon that so far. Let's take a look at the list of suggested readings that you should be laying your hands on during the course. And it goes without saying that the suggested readings are in addition to the lectures which I shall be delivering and handouts which you are going to get uh, very uh, regularly uh, relating all the lectures that I'm going to deliver. So, getting back to the books that you must read, let's take a look at the list. First of all, we have The Brand Asset Management by Scott M. Davis. This is a book which I suggest you treat as your textbook. It's not a very big book, 
It explains the whole concept beautifully in simple words. And anybody you know, who's wanting to have a very good understanding of the subject should read this book from cover to cover. Then we have Building Strong Brands by David Auker, who is supposed to be one of the marketing gurus in the present day world. It's a big, thick book. I do not really expect you to go through this book cover to cover. What I do expect is that you use this book as a reference because the level of comprehension you're going to derive out of this book is going to be, I would say, very, very special. Then we have another book by the title Branding, and the author is Jeffrey Randall. It's a small book. It is not kind of a book which you read and can develop a very clear understanding uh, of the concept in totality. This is kind of a critique, and this book is going to help you uh, while you're reading other books alongside this one. So just skim through it. And then, lastly, I would strongly recommend this book by the name of Strategic Brand Management by a French author, probably, Jean-Noël Capferrer. This is a little high-level book. I, again, do not really expect you to read this book from cover to cover. You will not have time. And even if you have, you may not be able to fully appreciate this book until the time you have some level of practical exposure to the marketing world. But I do expect you to skim through it and use it as a reference book wherever you are stuck or wherever you, are, you think you should be uh, getting a little, little more details. Uh, with this, I would say, Kodahafis to you and see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.